Welcome to our regular trustee meeting today, Monday, May 9th, 2022. If all of you would please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. We have an agenda for today's meeting. Are there any changes or corrections? Um, I have none. Uh, before we make that, though, I'd like to make just a motion to excuse Mrs. Dean from today's regular trustee meeting um, and approve the agenda as presented. I'll second that. Trustee Crutch? Yes. Trustee Walls? Yes. <clears throat> Make a motion to accept the general ledger report in the amount of three hundred twenty-six thousand five hundred seventeen dollars and seven cents for the May fourth, two thousand twenty-two payroll. Second. Trustee Kretz. Yes. Trustee Wallace. Yes. We'll make a motion to accept the payment listing report in the amount of five hundred forty-four thousand one hundred fifty-nine dollars and twenty-two cents for warrants through May fifth, two thousand twenty-two. Second. Trustee Kretz. Yes. Trustee Wallace. Yes. Make a motion to approve the regular trustee meeting minutes from April 25th, 2022 and the special trustee meeting uh, from April 18th, 2022 as presented. Second. Trustee Kretz? Yes. Trustee Wallace? Yes. This is a portion of our meeting where we allow citizens to speak. Anyone that wants to speak on any issue uh, on our agenda, please rise and you have three minutes. Seeing no one that wants to take the microphone. Miss, Mrs. Graff, this is your chance. <laughs> okay. Okay. Then we'll go into, uh, there is no old business, new business. Mr. Zaharia. Thank you, board. I will turn it over to the fire chief for the presentation for the administration of the oath. <clears throat> Good evening, board. Thank you for your time tonight. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out and joining us this evening. That's a, uh, again, a special evening for us as we get to, uh, uh, recognize two new members of the organization and for that purpose um, I'd like to uh, go through our normal process we've modified it just a little bit because the hiring process has changed as the board has amended rules over time so a few slight tweaks but um, uh, the oath will still be the same as we've done in the past the position of firefighter is one rich in tradition pride and honor not only the fire service but society as a whole the firefighter is a role model and the person others turn to in a time of crisis here in the Beaver Creek Township Fire Department, we expect our firefighters to be among the best trained and highly proficient professionals serving the members of our community with integrity, pride, and compassion. Our firefighters are most often the first impression we make as an organization. Therefore, we do not take lightly the responsibility we hold with a 25 to 30 year commitment to the community, the fire department, or the individual hired as a career firefighter. <coughs> Tonight, it is my honor to present to the board the township's newest firefighters who have demonstrated Thank the knowledge, Thank skills, you. and traits that exemplify the professionalism and pride of the Beaver Creek Township Fire Department and our commitment to the citizens of Beaver Creek. I'm presenting firefighter paramedic Justin Davis for his oath to the position of full-time firefighter. Justin grew up in the Columbus area and currently resides in Choctaw Lake in London, Ohio. He is a proud father of Addison Davis, age 11, and Jace Davis, age 8. Justin attended Fairbanks High School where he received a football scholarship to Miami University and he majored in exercise science with a minor in gerontology. After college, Justin attended Butler Tech Community College where he received his firefighter 1 and 2 level certifications as well as his EMT basic certification, hazmat tech certification, confined space rescue, and rope rescue technicians. He joined the fire service in January of 2013, working for Sugar Creek Township Fire Department and the City of Vandalia Fire Department, before being hired on with Beaver Creek Township Fire Department in March of 2014. After receiving his paramedic certification from Sinclair Community College, Justin was sworn in as a career firefighter paramedic with Beaver Creek Township in January of 2016. In 2019, Justin was involved in a near-fatal motor vehicle accident, sustaining multiple injuries and forcing him to resign from Beaver Creek in 2020 until he could heal sufficiently to return to duty. After two years of recovery and rehabilitation, Justin was able to return to the fire service, first at Springfield Township Fire Department in October 2021, and here tonight. 
Justin is incredibly blessed and thankful to all those from Beaver Creek Fire who supported him and his family on the road to recovery and looks forward to what the future holds. With that, we have to go to Justin. Certification of hiring, Beaver Creek Township Fire Department Career Firefighter. I hereby certify that we have on this date hired Justin Davis, again, to the position of Career Firefighter of the Beaver Creek Township Fire Department. Said appointment took effect May 2nd, 2022. Justin, I'd like you to repeat the oath after me. I, Justin Davis. I, Justin Davis. Being duly sworn. Feeling duly sworn. Say that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Saying that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And will faithfully discharge the duties. And will faith faithfully discharge the duties. Of career firefighter. Of career firefighter. For the Beaver Creek Township Fire Department. For the Beaver Creek Township Fire Department. Green County, Ohio. Green County, Ohio. We're good to go. <laughs> Dorston grew up in Beaver Creek and graduated from Beaver Creek High School in 2020. He was a varsity member of the high school bowling and lacrosse teams. Anthony joined the Beaver Creek Township Fire Department Cadet Program in June of 2020 and he attended Sinclair Community College to earn his Firefighter Level 2 certification in 2020 and his EMT Basic certification in 2021. Anthony began, began working part-time with the City of Lebanon Divisions of Fire with the City of Lebanon Division of Fire in October 2021. He is excited to continue his career with the Beaver Creek Township Fire Department and serve the community he has grown up with. Firefighter Anthony Dorston, your family may, uh, actually, let's get you up here for your hope, please. Uh, 
certification of hiring for Beaver Creek Township Fire Department, career firefighter. And today I hereby certify that we have on this date hired Anthony Dorston to the position of career firefighter with Beaver Creek Township Fire Department. Set appointment to take took effect May 2nd, 2022. So I'll raise your right hand. I repeat after me. I Anthony Dorsey. I Anthony Dorsey. Being duly sworn. Being duly sworn. Say that I will support. Say that I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And will faithfully discharge. And will faithfully discharge the duties of career firefighter. The duties of career firefighter of the Beaver Creek Township Fire Department. Of the Beaver Creek Township Fire Department. Green County, Ohio. Green County, Ohio. Congratulations. <laughs> I just want to thank, excuse me, I want to thank all you firefighters for coming in, dressing up, and being here for your your brothers to be uh, sworn in. Good luck to both of you. Welcome you to be part of our force, and thank you for all all of you for being here. Appreciate it. Stay safe. Thanks, Ed. 
four of the same. Well, clear room. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, board. Next item I have is on page 13 of your packet is a uh, proclamation <coughs> designating May 15th through May 21st as National Police Week. I have several copies there for you. I would like to present one, obviously, to the Greene County Sheriff's Office, the Greene County Park Rangers, Beaver Creek Police, and the Ohio State Highway Patrol, all entities that patrol within the unincorporated area and in the unincorporated areas of Beaver Creek Township. Uh, if you could please read this into the record, please. <clears throat> I'll make a motion to approve resolution number 2022 509 admin f a proclamation designating May 15th, 2022 through May 21st, 2022 as National Police Week. Whereas in 1962, President Kennedy proclaimed May 15th as National Peace Officers Memorial Day in the calendar week in which May 15th falls as National Police Week. And whereas National Police Week is a collaborative effort of many organizations dedicated to honoring America's law enforcement community and gives special recognition to those law enforcement officers who have lost their lives in the line of duty for the safety and protection of others. And whereas law enforcement officers strive to maintain a safe environment for all, often while facing significant challenges and dangers, and our community recognizes the important work and sacrifices officers make each day to protect the citizens of Beaver Creek Township. And whereas the residents of Beaver Creek Township are served by the Greene County Sheriff's Office, Greene County Rangers, Beaver Creek Police, and the Ohio State Highway Patrol, and whereas there are approximately 900,000 law enforcement officers serving in communities across the United States, and whereas since the first recorded death in 1791, more than 20,000 law enforcement officers in the United States have made the ultimate sacrifice and lost their lives in the line of duty, including Beaver Creek Township Constable J. William Fogwell. <coughs> Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of Beaver Creek Township do hereby proclaim May 15th through May 21st, 2022 as National Police Week in Beaver Creek Township and encourage all citizens to join in honoring and recognizing our, recognizing our law enforcement officers. Beaver Creek Township encourages you to initiate, support, embrace new ways of honoring these critical public servants as they perform their duties in an especially challenging time. We publicly salute the law enforcement officers in our community and in communities across the nation. We dedicate these seven days annually to recognize these great public servants, but we should not hesitate to make every day an opportunity to honor and show appreciation to those men and women serving daily in law enforcement to keep our communities safe. Be it further resolved, the Board of Trustees of Beaver Creek Township do hereby proclaim May 15th to be National Peace Officers Memorial Day to honor our law enforcement officers who have made the ultimate sacrifice and service to their community or have been disabled in the performance of their duties and let us recognize and pay <coughs> respect to the survivors of our fallen heroes and witness thereof. We have hereunto set our hand and caused the seal of Beaver Creek Township to be affixed this ninth day of May, 2022. Second. Trustee Kretz. Yes. Trustee Walsh. Yes. Thank you, board. And while you're signing all the proclamations, uh, next item is on page 15 of your packet is the bi-weekly report for the sheriff's office followed by the monthly report uh, Sergeant Moore's Moore is here to answer any questions Good evening Sergeant Moore Good evening, I had no questions, but uh, Are there any uh, key points that you need to let us know about? Not at this time business as usual <clears throat> Any questions? I had no questions. Stay safe, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, board. Next item is on page 44 of your packet is the bi weekly report for HR. Are there any questions? Mr. Kratz? I had no questions. Other than when is our, so we have, is it June or July is when our health insurance, are we looking at that again or where no, we stand? No, we did the extended contract, so we go back onto the calendar year. Okay. Uh, so we will actually start um, collecting data uh, and doing the fire forms probably around August uh, to start negotiating uh, and getting numbers back in September. And then our uh, contract, new contract year will start in October with where we would have a long one to end it at December 31st, and then it'll be back on calendar years after that. Okay, and so um, 
and we can get a report maybe next time at the next meeting but is has there been were the issues and challenges that some of the some of the employees uh, were facing have they been mitigated as far as the I'll, uh, I'll get a the report. double yeah, the yeah double. I'll get a report because what we did is to, it went directly to the broker so right um, it's never heard back yeah that got resolved or people got refunded or yeah I'll double check with our broker okay thank you Alex do I put on Jessica's name in just leave a blank there just leave or? a blank yeah that's fine thank you thank you board uh, next item is going to be a presentation from the Community Development and Risk Department. It starts on page 48. I'll turn it over to Max and I'll have to <coughs> move some things around so we can do the presentation. Good evening. So basically the, the purpose of the project is to create or to find a consensus on some key issues. Uh, that's what we think the, the primary goal is, to build a consensus on all of these issues. One being the township's vision for desirable and sustainable land uses. We want to know long-term strategies for aligning our policies with that vision. We want an assessment of existing land uses and conditions. And a critical pick comparison between those conditions and the existing land use plan document. Um, we want to employ effective and easy to understand communication strategies. So we want to make sure that the report is um, useful to anybody who looks at it. Um, we want to build a comprehensive framework for sustainable and fiscally responsible development. Um, so it'll protect the township's national resources while enabling additional residential and commercial development. We'd like a quantitative performance measurement or return on investment of new pro property taxes generated by a project versus long-term maintenance costs of this township. We think that could be uh, very useful information. And then finally, we're looking for strategies for ensuring that the land use plan document is viable for at least five years and future updates plan, uh, future updates to the plan build on this plan. Um, we want to keep this going. And so uh, the project so far, in January of this year, we published a request for proposals uh, using a couple different methods to reach out and, and find applicants. Uh, on March 14th, after collecting all of the uh, submissions, our staff, along with regional planning and Miami Valley Regional Planning, so Green and Miami Valley Regional Planning, held a uh, evaluation session of the three submitted proposals. What we did was a blind uh, scoring, basically, we had them submit a cost proposal separately. We scored the proposals based on their merit and then opened the cost proposals and took in that information as well. Um, we did determine that Planning Next, which is the group that we're hoping to contract with, supplied the best proposal. Uh, their scores were by far the highest in the group. And then looking at the um, dollars per hour work, so that was how many work hours they could provide, they were also the lowest. They did initially, um, I think, maybe overestimated the needs for the project, and so they had maybe more hours than we needed, and we were able to do a scope of service negotiation on March 24th, um, and we kind of discussed how the project, their proposed project, compared back towards what we were looking for uh, and meet our budget a little bit better as well. And then on the 29th of March, uh, we were provided with a revised scope of work for them and a revised cost estimate. We determined it was something that we can work with that was going to meet our needs. So uh, now we are looking at um, uh, moving forward with the contracting and services. So their proposal is uh, broken down into three main phases. The first is pre planning, that's mostly um, 
gathering the steering committee, determining who that would be, and putting it together, and kind of planning to plan, it, as it were, um, engagement strategies for the phase two engagement, and some of these other things to, again, plan how we're going to undertake this uh, operation. Phase two is the real meat of the work. It's going to be a technical analysis, and then also rounds of public engagement. Um, and then finally, phase three is actually drafting the plan document itself, making sure that it is indeed useful to the public like we want it to be. Uh, I included the revised cost estimate. Uh, this is the summary. I've also got a full breakdown here. Um, as you can see, the revised total ends up being $87,010. I did want to kind of briefly touch on, I know, um, that when this project was originally discussed during budget uh, meetings, that I believe a price tag of roughly $75,000 was suggested. Um, none of our uh, applications came in under that, actually. And so we kind of wanted to just go into, you know, we, we were able to save some money in our budget and our operating budget from contracted services. Actually, most of the work done there was Carolyn Jamanenko, our new admin professional. Um, she was able to save us about $10,000 on the uh, cost of uh, digitizing records. And we plan on using that savings towards this project. We believe that um, we will not need to transfer any funds from the ATDC's budget pool in order to contract with Plan Connect, despite it, their cost being a little bit above what we initially budgeted for them. Um, and so I just want to give you a quick also a project timeline so you can understand what we're looking at. Um, by the end of Q2 of this year, we hope to have a steering committee created, and we want to begin conducting the existing conditions assessment, developing that outreach strategy. Uh, quarter three of this year is actually, we hope to hold the first steering committee meeting. Um, and that first round of public engagement <coughs> actually took place in quarter three. Uh, quarter four, so the end of the year, is when the work will be done primarily on the document itself, updating that document. Um, and then also working to prepare any draft recommendations that we think are, are uh, uh, useful. And then finally, quarter one of 2023 is when we'll be conducting workshops with trustees, the zoning commission. We'll hold that final steering committee meeting and we'll pre kind of prepare to present the final plan and distribute it to the public. So uh, we believe the project will be wrapped up quarter one of 2023. Um, I've included the draft resolution that we provided you here. And uh, there's a lot more information in the packet that we provided, including our original request for proposals, our scoring sheets that we used, um, and then their revised scope of work and cost estimates as well. Um, I'd be glad to answer any questions that you might have at this time, but our main uh, request is that you please pass the draft resolution that we've submitted, which would allow the township administrator to uh, engage their services on your Max, how many people um, reviewed this with you? So we included five. Uh, one of our reviewers, I don't think, fully understood the scoring system that we were using, so I excluded hers, um, although her score did match in discussion with our, um, with our scores as well. So um, that was myself, Randy Grosian, uh, DeAndre Avantil of NDRPC, or I'm sorry, Regional Planning Region County. And then, uh, Milo Simpson and Liz Whitaker, both of NDRPC, who have been kind of um, helping us through the whole process, how to, you know, how to get this RFP done and, and uh, planning the initial <coughs> what we need out of this project, they've been fantastic. So. Okay, thank you. I had a couple of questions. Yes. Um, as far as the from your goals standpoint that you had outlined um, in, in understanding and, and always appreciative of MVRPC and what they provide to the region, um, but also recognizing, you know, as far as the makeup of that, if you have two of the five and you've discounted one, so now two of the four, um, and as far as the, the review and, and, and the proposals that you received, when we move into that phase where we're looking at uh, the steering committee um, and the makeup of that, um, 
I want to. I'd like to make sure that we have a Green County focus on that, and not a Montgomery County makeup, and for a distinct risk for distinct reasons. So, from a development standpoint, and and really just a um, how Green County is different than Montgomery County. No different than Warren County is different than both Green County and Montgomery County. So, I just want to make sure that that we have that makeup of that steering committee um, that's, that's Green County focused. Um, and really, a, there should be some dynamic of, if you look at the urban, you know, from a Beaver Creek versus Beaver Creek Township, I said this at the joint meeting, um, they are one big Beaver Creek community, but there are distinct differences between the two. And we just need to make, it's important at least to me to make sure that we, we don't lose sight of that. Um, as far as the quantitative analysis, um, so one thing that, and I just see this in my life every day um, outside of the township, is that um, cities and villages and townships even to some extent too, counties specifically, they tend to focus on the quantitative return for them um, and not flipping the table a little bit and saying what would make it attractive for investment in our community. So you have to look at both. Um, it's important to make sure you know, cities, it's pretty easy. It's, it's if, you, if you want to drop in commercial development, you have to generate income tax, property tax, and sales tax. If you do all three, it's, you hit the trifecta, and you're going to get approved even if the residents come out against it. That's just a known in my world. Um, but if, you've, if you kind of flip that and say, what, would, what helps it make it worth investing? And then maybe there's pockets where you've development has struggled, how do you make that section more desirable for investment um, without cutting off your nose to spite your face? You still have to make a long-term return on it. I brought this up, you know, City of Huber Heights is doing 15-year, 100% tax abatements because they're looking at 16 to 30 years from now. So think about that. I appreciate that. And, uh, we will definitely As far as the, um, the cost, uh, I, I appreciate that we saved some money on digitization. I always challenge, and Chief knows this probably better than anyone, as far as you know, when we say we saved money because we used an internal resource, unless they worked for free and didn't take benefits or we didn't put in their retirement, it wasn't free. Um, it's not a one for one. So there's an indirect versus a direct cost. If you outsource it, you pay one thing. If it's, in, if it's internal, it's an indirect cost savings. Um, and there's an opportunity cost because we could have used that person to do something else. So it's never a, a true one for one. So I'm just, this, this isn't elected. I'm just telling you no, how my brain works. I apologize in advance. No, I <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, from a, so from a cost standpoint, using that to say, well, we saved some money so we can spend more. Um, everything has gone up. Everything is more expensive. I understand that. So, but we have to try to keep that in mind. Are you asking us to approve the entire 87,000 or are you asking us to approve phase one? Because sometimes you'd approve the whole thing, but if you'd, you'd like to see where the steering committee takes things before you bite off the whole apple. So the resolution is worded such to ask you to allow the township administrator to contract services with them. Right, so is the contract for the 87 or for the phase one? And that's still, so we need to figure out whether or not it's going to be phase based, which is um, something suggested to us by the ERPC, yeah. um, or whether or not it's for the complete contract. And that's, we'll have to have a, a bit of contract negotiation with them before a final contract is done. Yeah. I would strongly con ask you to consider them to, number one, take their 87 and break that into each phase. And so it, that, and then number is two is, and number two is make sure that legal. As the, from a township standpoint, we have the ability to exit at any phase if we so choose. Okay. So that we're not, we don't get through phase one and be like, man, we, didn't, we don't like where we're headed or we didn't get to where we thought we were. And now we, it's not 87, it's 97 to finish. So I just make sure that we have breaks and that legal's comfortable that we can step, step away, delay if needed. So we get another tornado, something happens. No, I, that's okay. a very, very good uh, point, and definitely Don will be working with you to uh, make so, sure that that's working. Yeah, because I, 
especially something that has, if it's a one-year project, it has three to you know, three or four whatever definitive phases. It's good to break that up and be able to, you know, kind of step back, look at what we got, reevaluate, okay, approve, move, go the next step. I think that's uh, personally. There's a motion on page 95, just to also to let the board know, we've already been contacted by at least one business owner in the township who saw the RFP go out and, and definitely wants to be involved in the steering committee. So he's definitely on our list uh, to include. So there is an interest of unincorporated area, either businesses or residents that are gonna be yeah. interested in serving on the yeah. steering committee. You'll, you'll obviously have some that have interest that is to their own interest. Sure. And you'll have others that have interest that's to a broader interest. And so a five-year five year sunset is pretty close. I mean, 15, 20 years is the, what you really have to try to figure out where you want to be then. Because five years, we can predict that to a degree. Yeah. And so just give a little history on the last time. Um, it was right when um, the township hired the administrator position and hired me, um, I can tell you that so many things have changed, not only community-wide, but regionally, but especially in the unincorporated area. So, and that's that was uh, roughly about 10 years ago when we, we finally adopted the, the last one. So, you know, it, it's definitely due for an update just because of the market changes, the community changes, um, and the regional changes as well. Sure. <laughs> they did provide. Uh, they did provide one uh, uh, one of the phases. The cost proposal right. for a county was three phases. So yeah, that's that. Right. Yeah. So we will. And I saw that. It's just make sure we, you know, if, if that's the that if that's the the final breakdown, and then what's the what's the if you had to, to exit or delay, and they're, sure. they're they're two different situations. Um, how do you hit pause legally, and how do you say? No, we need to change course. Okay. Just making sure it's contract. It's contract language. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Just look at the and Miss Frick knows that stuff, so more than anybody. Okay. Thank you, board. Motion on page ninety five. Um, I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2022-0509-C D R dash A authorizing the expenditure for contracted services. The planning is, is the word next. Planning to, next. Yes. Planning next is the company as presented. Second. With discussion that we essentially work out a contract that allows us to either delay or to step aside um, with essentially those terms are out there. Sign it without that because that was pretty clear by the board. Right. Yeah. So. Trustee Kratz? Yes. Trustee Wallace? Yes. Thank you. You got all my questions tonight, Max. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I saved uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> I have one. Um, I'll move on to the uh, next item on our agenda, which are uh, we are requesting that we schedule a hearing to consider two zoning commission mm -hmm. cases that came before us actually last Thursday on the 5th. Um, case 828 was the two motions on page 95 as well. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll make a motion to schedule a hearing to consider Zoning Commission recommendation on Zoning Case Zoning Commission Case 828 for May 23rd, 2022 to begin at 6.30 p.m. following the regular, regularly scheduled trustee meeting. Second. Trustee Kretz? Yes. Trustee Wallace? Yes. And I'll make a similar motion to schedule a hearing to consider Zoning Commission recommendation on Zoning Commission Case 829 for May 23rd, 2022 to begin roughly at 6.30 p.m. following the scheduled trustee meeting. Second. Trustee Krebs? Yes. Trustee Wallace? Yes. 
Thank you, Board. Uh, I will turn it over to Fire Marshal Grogen, uh, who has some awareness items, and uh, and then, of course, ask any questions regarding the bi weekly. So. I will turn it back to the next. So I'll get the CIS uh, application. Sure. So the last, uh, this is just a point of information awareness for uh, the trustees. We, um, we had you sign a resolution during your last meeting, uh, basically um, supporting Sure will. <laughs> okay. Uh, for information and action items, um, as you're aware, the Green County uh, in Green County Community Improvement Corporation awards um, EDIPs or Economic Development Incentive Program grants mm -hmm. uh, to assist companies that want to expand in Green County. And uh, the the grant is basically based on a number of project or on a number of project factors, including job creation, additional payroll, fixed asset uh, investment. Um, well, I was given a notice through uh, Mr. Zare uh, by Eric Henry, uh, the director, the development director, uh, that Beaver Creek Township was awarded the three of the last four EDIP grants over the last two years. And I want to quote uh, Eric's email: uh, "That outstanding, um, that's outstanding staff, uh, and a testament to you and your team's ability to position good projects in front of our board." Uh, Eric went on to thank. Uh, thank us, the township, for their cooperation with their organization. So, I want to publicly thank uh, the community development risk or the community development staff, and specifically Mr. Max McConnell, for his diligence and efforts in pursuing these EIP grants for the, uh, the the businesses in the community and other grants uh, like them. Um, and overall, I want to personally thank him also for his effort and his dedication to the economic development in the township. Um, as a summary. Uh, the grant, uh, the grants combined actually achieved um, about $150,000 or over $150,000 of funding for the businesses in the township, including QQE, which uh, Quality Courts Engineering, which just moved in across the street, DEC, which is right next to them, Defense Engineering Corporation, which I think is what it is, and then uh, Mosier, which is out on the, off of uh, Orchard Lane on the south side. So just wanted to get that information and again, thanks, Mr. McConnell, publicly for. And we want to congratulate Mr. McConnell for his recent marriage. Yes. <laughs> That's secondary. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any questions about fire? I'm sorry. I did not. Mr. Kratz? Um, I just, I guess the single family dwelling permits just still, um, have we had any discussion with builders to find out what's going on there? There's building out the permits they filed in December, or are they, why are we not getting permits when all the construction appears to be going crazy? S since the two weeks I've not had discussion necessarily with builders and Mr. McConnell's been out and about, I did uh, provide a chart on there of the last, uh, the last couple months in comparison to the last uh, six years or so. Showing those numbers, but we'll get uh, we'll get some more information. Uh, we'll have some more discussion. The uh, the chief economist for and this just goes to the and chief. You may be interested in this just from a standpoint of your ten year plan. So the chief chief economist for the National Association of Realtors um, essentially just gave an update last week ultimately, um, and so it just interesting dynamics. I don't. You'd have to look at what your plan projects as far as from a revenue stream, as far as growth in the township, um, and compare it you know, to my to kind of street level information that you can find from builders. Um, and then compare that, I'll share that information with Alex. He can distribute it out to you guys um, as far as the uh, new home construction, um, you know, what the projections are for that, and just kind of see how that aligns with your local. Builder group and, 
and then kind of compare that to your 10-year plan to make sure um, if you take a hit somewhere else and you take a hit on construction, uh, what happens? Well, we're taking hits everywhere. Right. So. Yeah, yeah, labor costs for one. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, board. Uh, next item is on page 106 of your packet is the biweekly report for IT. Are there any questions? I had none. Seems like they're, the patching and stuff is get really getting close to up to 100%. Yeah, they're working on that. They're also, um, kind of another project is the uh, IT infrastructure for this room for the remodel. Um, we took a, on consideration all the comments um, by the elected officials and incorporated it in that. So uh, we should, we're hoping, uh, which is also an awareness item under, under the road department, we're hoping to have the complete overall project uh, presented at the next trustee meeting. Um, even though some of the things are under the threshold of being approved by the board, we're bringing the overall project. Uh, good news, as of this week, it is under budget uh, when we budgeted. So. Uh, even with, despite some of the uh, inflation costs that we've seen and material costs, but uh, and that's in combination of using our staff and outsourcing some of the work. It's it's uh, related to IT, but it's not isolated to IT. Um, so as far as um, uh, redundancy in power um, and in internet, so is every station on a generator? Yes, including the admin building now. Okay, and. Um, Okay. Yep. Um, and just uh, as far as if, if there were something as far as a some some degree of tinkering or, or attack on from an energy grid standpoint, we at least have a temporary correct um, yep. solution. And we so. have two separate uh, internet pipes on two separate uh, lines that come into the township and two separate providers as well. So okay. um, one uh, internet pipe comes in at um, station sixty four uh, through Spectrum. And the other pipe comes in here through Agile Networks. Um, and um, Paragon has been able to create a automatic sale, fail safe. So right now on 64s, the line that comes in there is just our phone system. Um, but if the network will go down, so if we lose internet um, and the network goes down, then the backup pipe at 64s will take over. If station 64 uh, internet goes down, that provides through the grid, through the microwave system, um, and then Agile Network will take over. So it's an automatic self, uh, fail safe. So it's happened a couple times with no interruption of service uh, in regards to response. And then of course the critical, res critical response is obviously our uh, sheriff and fire department needs. Okay. And then the towers are essentially powered through whatever is backup for the station. Correct. Okay, not isolated. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then, um, do we have anything in place? So I know our, our our agreement with the city is for gasoline. We do. Do we have diesel there as well? Yes. Okay. But we don't have the ability to transport that diesel to a generator if needed. Yes, so we, we do. do. The road department does. The yeah. road department yeah. has it. And we keep. Uh, and I know Tim's <coughs> here, but uh, we keep so much in the uh, container down mm -hmm. at the road department. So if, let's say they use it to go out on the job site so that they don't have to keep bringing equipment back to fuel up, mm -hmm. um, before it's taken back to the garage, it's put back in service. We've had to use it a couple times on long-term incidents where we brought it out to supply the uh, equipment, um, okay. on a f large fire. Okay. Or, um, I think the last time was the apartment fire at Stone Hill Village. So. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bringing gifts, I love it. <laughs> we will pause for station identification. Boy, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so Thank tall. You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So yes, we have the ability to transport fuel. We keep fuel on site. Sure. Uh, diesel fuel in case it needed on either a job site or for emergency pur purposes. Uh, we keep that uh, tank full. Um, and then plus, we also have maintained, um, just in case something happens, there's a breakdown at the city's facility. Uh, we do, we still have a contract with, I believe, Chief Speedway. 
I think it's I think it's Speedway. So the two Speedways. So whoever, if for whatever reason, if it goes down, we have the backup uh, private industry to go back to. Right. We do have the card. I should. You're right. We have the Fleet Max card, which essentially we can use anywhere. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, board. Uh, next items on page 108 is the biweekly report for the finance department. Are there any questions for Mrs. Molden? I would also like to thank her for being in charge while I was gone and handling a 17-minute <coughs> trustee meeting. She did a good job. <laughs> Saved her questions. <laughs> I have no questions. Do you have any questions for Ms. Molden? No. Just if she could do a meeting more often, it would be appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you that was also brought up at the staff meeting this past. <laughs> That's too cute. <laughs> Thank you, board. Next item is on page uh, 111, and the first item is uh, purchase requests for engineering services. I'll turn it over to Mr. Parks. Good evening, board. Good evening. Um, the proposal that's in your packet is like the final phase before we go out to bid for the stormwater on factory road we did the first phase was the modeling and uh, topography maps and they came back to us with suggestions we sat down as a panel with the engineer mr zaharif myself and gave them what we thought the best options were uh, so this is for a set of construction drawings to replace enlarge a pipe underneath factory road and put a backflow preventer which is the main problem on that box culvert underneath Green County Sanitary. Well, there are, uh, also just to point out this is uh, funds that are going to be used through the American Rescue Plan. Um, has Choice One given a, a construction estimate as well? Yes, it should be in your packet. Okay, I didn't see that. The total yeah. project is 292000 It's on page 115. Okay. Okay, and we have sufficient DARPA funds mm -hmm. to cover that? Yes, uh, actually um, we set some money aside for uh, fiber and broadband. Uh, so between the uh, city's project and the county's project, we don't see a need to um, spend any of those funds. So that, that frees up <coughs> some of the funds. Uh, so which will also free up some additional funds for some additional stormwater projects that we may be looking at. Uh, along the Beaver Creek and on the Little Miami. And do we have a contractor that's bid this yet? No, this well, no. We'll, what this phase you'll, will do. Obviously, you'll do the construction drawings, right. and then you'll it's a bid set of drawings you're going to put out. Okay. Correct. That is correct. Okay. And um, okay. And the the reason I ask is uh, there's a sanitary line extension project that's going on right now um, that essentially based on a one-year-old quote has come in um, 30 over 30 percent higher than what was quoted over a year ago so right and we just received this back last week okay and I feel pretty comfortable we'll be in that price range I won't guarantee anything in today's market Can't. Um, but okay. take a look at the, the pricing currently so okay and on a backflow on a box culvert, so does that then mean that it becomes a dam? It'll allow water to go from factory to the creek. But not back but it up. Will not, it will not allow the creek once it gets above the... Uh, the backflow dice, to back up into it. And back up through and then out onto factory road, which is the main problem. Right, right. so that, that's my point though. If, if it can't back up through it and water it can't get into it because it can't back up, then where does the water go? So that's the, the additional pipes 
So, you know, we will be redoing, obviously, the ditch lines. Okay. But that's the, the additional Evolve. pipes that are going to be required are going to take the additional water naturally down further south. So, um, so we took in consideration not only the water coming back, but also uh, we expanded the, and they asked me, and I said, absolutely. They took a look at everything from the MI development in the city all the way up to US 35. Uh, including, and we received plans from the city as well for the um, commercial development across from the, the plant. So all those things were taken in consideration. So, um, so there will be an additional larger pipe, um, and that will be able to take the water away from the box culvert down to the other work that actually staff did several years ago. So, so I'd say it's just not. Uh, putting the backflow preventer. Um, it's yeah. actually redesigning the storm water out front and taking it to a different location as well. And that'll be on the east side of factory or the west side? The extra pipes? Yeah. It'll be on both? Both. Uh, both sides. East yeah. and west. Mm -hmm. Currently there's a 24 inch pipe, which is undersized. I believe their suggestion was a two 30 inch pipes going underneath factory, which will allow it to go back to the west, but at the same time, with the ditch regrading, it will allow it to go south. Okay. And does the comprehensive plan suggest that the road will be widened in the next 5 to 15 years? Uh, I would have to refer to the comprehensive plan, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I don't have a good question. Just need to make sure we don't need... We don't lay pipe and then have to pull it all up. Yeah, so one of the, one of the long-term plans that we we anticipate uh, if there's any additional growth. Now, we're Excuse sharing me. this plan also with the city of Beaver Creek because Actually, the transportation plan would have it, wouldn't it? Yeah, with but the county's there's, transportation plan. There's that, nothing in the thoroughfare plan to widen that section there. Now, okay. as it continues to grow, what I do see probably with the safety plan that um, is currently out, the safety study that we're doing. In the that, that we're doing, that the county engineer is doing from the city of Beaver Creek on Indian Ripple all the way out to the unincorporated uh, line at Sugar Creek, taking that whole Indian, R R Indian Ripple corridor, is to take a look at what modifications we need to do at Indian uh, Ripple and Factory. Right. We have budgeted for a traffic light, but and we know probably the safety study is going to require a traffic light there. The question is, is it going to require traffic light with an additional turn the lane, turn central lane. turn lanes? I mean, we're limited because of the bridge right there on, on Indian Rump over the Little Miami. But um, we're seeing an increase. In fact, I received an email today based on a presentation I made that, you know, kind of where we're at with uh, the timeline on this. So as soon as we get the safety study back and um, definitely know what direction we're going uh, forward with, uh, whether it's additional turn lanes, either on Indian Ripple or factory or a combination of both. I don't see an additional, there will, there is a requirement for an additional center turn lane and a turn lane, which we took in consideration uh, into the development into the city. So we know that the choice one is aware of that project. Okay. As I was um, going to say, the self storage facility that yep. butts up against Arlington and the light industrial use and then the little road that cuts up in between, is that road private or public? That is a private road. That so it's a private be. road, Correct. but there's going to have, they're going to have a right turn in and a right, right, right turn in. I believe it's a right turn, turn lane, in I should say. and a center. I think it's a center turn and a right turn in. Because as the, I recall the, from the plan, the ingress so. into the storage facility or the warehousing facility is off of that private road, or it's off a of factory. It's off a factory into that Both. private road. Both. Yeah, into the private road, and it's and it aligns with the county's entrance and one of their entrances as well for the sanitary engineering. So it kind of makes an intersection there. So that that was taken into consideration. Now, we do have the plans that also show that if long term, if, if that project doesn't move forward and it expires and someone else buys the property, there are some additional recommendations that uh, we now have engineering for and justifying to say potentially the roads, the, one of the first recommendations was raise the road by five feet. Okay, so several years ago, the city, uh, when asking that, was seeing if we had anything that shows that information. We had nothing, no engineering that 
required it to be raised by two feet, three feet, four feet, and in this case, five feet. So we now have the engineering to say, if a major development comes in on the city side, we could require them on the township roads to actually raise it by five feet. Hmm. Now that's only if the current approved plans are expire and someone else buys it and moves into it, you know, does something else with the property. So, but also, um, we have talked with the city as well uh, in that little piece that's currently for sale. It doesn't go across the new intersection of Yellow Brick, Shaker Town, and uh, Factory. So there, also there's a recommendation. It's, it's essentially the floodplain now, and they're not going to be able to build there, is to require another detention pond uh, on that property. So if someone buys the, the factory road in the city side that's currently for sale along US 35 and factory Created a lake up, basin. There's a little piece that comes across on the other side and there is a somewhat of a detention system there with the modifications of Shaker Town. Um, but we do now have plans and, and I, we, um, Mr. Parks and I just uh, a couple weeks ago had a meeting with uh, uh, the Little Miami Conservancy District, and we mentioned to the city why we were there, both the county and uh, the engineer and the assistant engineer, uh, and their planning, I don't know his title, plan, uh, Mr. Burkett, that we had this information and we were going to have a coordinating meeting with them to show it. So uh, obviously the city engineer is very interested in, in the study that we did. There's no other questions. I'll make, a motion, yeah, I'll make a motion to approve purchase request 22 road 0381 to Choice One Engineering for final design construction drawings in the amount of $19,550 and authorize the township administrator to sign for the board. Second. Trustee Kretz? Yes. Trustee Wallace? Yes. Thank you, board. I'll turn it over to Mr. Parks for the next item. <coughs> The next item is uh, roof replacement for station 61. Um, this project was actually scheduled in 2020 and we got some rough estimates back um, at the time. Fire asked us to put it on hold. They had given us to go ahead to move forward with the project. Um, we have a base bid, which would be to replace both flat roofs and go back with shingles. We have an alternate one, which is to go replace the fat, flat roofs and do a standing seam roof on the rest of the building where shingles are in place now. And an alternate two is to just replace all the metal on the building. Um, that's gonna be probably pretty cost prohibitive because mm -hmm. All those corners and stuff that are done now would have to be formed on site due to the design of the building. Um, he was talking the metal edge. Yeah, there's some the rounded wall. Yeah. Over on the it would be the west side. It comes up to it. What's the square footage of the roof? The flat sections off the top of my head I don't know okay. was there any consideration given to making the flat sections pitched no there was not when we put this proposal together but you've got a bunch of HVAC stuff in there you got RTUs on the roof uh -huh. Are you planning to lift the RTUs off the roof when you put the new roof on? Is that what you're quoting? Rather that than is the rather plan. Than, rather yes. than cutting around. What's an RTU? Rooftop unit. Thank you. Yeah, that is the plan. As we. Because um, if you don't, and you got to cut around them, you kind of lose the. There's one. Right, and actually, in the, the uh, uh, RFP, we have a mandatory meeting. With anybody that wants to bid on the project go over those kind of details um, before yeah. they place their bid. Yeah. Um, we did a Duralast roof on the library, is that right? It was a Duralast, it was a Duralast 
vent contractor essentially. Right. Okay. Because obviously they come out to certify the roof before it, it's handed off. That's how it normally would work, at least. Okay. Uh, the RFP in your packet's also been approved by legal. And so, I'm sorry, are we asking for one of the options to RFP or we're going to put it in, have all of the options in the RFP? All of the op options are in the RFP. Good. Okay. Yeah. And, it, and we'll see where that falls with the budget from fire as yeah. far as what can be done and what's in the best interest of the township. There's some, there's new product out too. You've probably seen it. That steel roof that looks like shingle. I don't know if you've seen that or not. Yeah. So if it's not that much more, in some cases, it's not any more expensive than standing seam. So. Okay. So this is just approving an RFP. Yeah, yeah the RFP to go out. <coughs> Where's the motion? Motion on 112. So I saw it and I can't find it. Ah. Make a, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll make a motion to approve the advertising of the request for proposal for Station 61 roof replacement. Second. Trustee Kretz? Yes. Trustee Wallace? Yes. Thank, Thank you, Board. The next item is the bi weekly report. Are there any questions? And that is on page 127. I had no questions. I have no questions. Thank you, Barton. Uh, one point of awareness in the report when we wrote this, we had zero applicants. After we turned it in, we now have one, which we'll be interviewing this week, and see where we go from there. What do you attribute that lack of interest to? I would say wages mostly. When you compare to what I know, Sure Creek just hired two at sixteen seventy-five an hour in the door, and our suggested pay rate in this one in this grade. Tops out at like 1945, 50. Memory serves off the top of my head. And the last last two times we've put out to fill a position, each time we've only had one applicant each. How many applicants? One of them was to come back after he left. And this one I believe is an actual retired firefighter from Xenia. How many applicants does Sugar Creek have? That off the top of my head, I do not know. I know they filled two positions. Okay. Do a public records request or ask them for copies of their I other do applications. Test me today. I'll just call them and ask them. Yeah, just ask for copies of their other applications and call. I mean, we'll interview and if if they have three thing. applicants and they hired two, there's one still looking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Parks. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Thank you, Board. I'll turn it over uh, to the Fire Chief for the first uh, request here. Thank you, Board. And actually, uh, I just want to take a moment, and there were two things I should have mentioned earlier uh, related to the hiring. Uh, the first is um, that in both cases, uh, we're able to use uh, the concepts we've been trying to build around as far as personnel retention and things like that uh, by being able to uh, get Justin Davis to come back. And 
And so all of the investment that we have in him from his first five years of service, obviously, we'll be able to uh, uh, get that back. Retool him a little bit because a few things have changed during his absence, but um, we're getting a, a, a paramedic firefighter um, who has experience with, obviously, the department and the community and wants to be here, so we're able to retain him, so that was huge. Um, and then the second thing is uh, Anthony is our fourth cadet that we've been able to hire. So we have Thomas in fire prevention, and then uh, Mr. Zaharia, Mr. Riley, and now uh, Mr. Dorsten uh, have all come from the cadet program. So uh, we've been very successful with that. And, uh, continue, look forward to continuing that tradition. Um, and then the second thing is um, something we don't talk about a lot, but fire service is traditionally a family-based uh, career path, and so uh, this is another opportunity where we have uh, where we've got multiple generations um, or multiple family members so working on the job so um, it's I know that there's oftentimes a negative public connotation to that but in the fire service that is part of the fire service tradition um, and Chief Dorsey is not part of the hiring or selection process at all um, he's maintained the, the appropriate distance um, the entire rest of the process happened outside of that but we're, we're fortunate to be able to get that kind of generational aspect uh, in the organization, so much appreciated. Um, and then with that, I'd like to uh, ask the board to uh, uh, pass a proclamation recognizing EMS Week uh, for 2022. Um, the uh, theme this year is EMS Week, Rising to the Challenge. Uh, there's an attached proclamation, and then we will have open houses, I believe, <coughs> every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'll have details uh, to you in case uh, you're able to come out and uh, join us for any of those events. Great. On all the stations or just? Uh, just three. Station 63, 64, and 65 will be hosting next week. Okay. Would you like this read or just past as presented? Uh, past as presented is perfectly acceptable. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve uh, and pass proclamation number 2022 dash a uh, today, May 9th, 2022, um, related to the uh, Beaver Creek Township Fire Department's Emergency Medical Services Professional recognizing their service to the community as presented. Second. Trustee Kretz? Yes. Trustee Wallace? Yes. <laughs> Nobody else would say it. You can have mine. <laughs> I don't need it. Let them eat cake. <laughs> Thank you. The next item we have is a uh, resolution uh, for some surplus items. Uh, this particular, uh, this is the second time it's happened. I caught it this time and then looked back and found it in the fire. Uh, we actually have some township items and some fire department items in the resolution. Uh, so we appreciate the donation of the filing cabinets to the fire department. <laughs> uh, the surplus here. Uh, but it does allow us to get rid of the uh, two remaining Tahoes. Uh, and that's the uh, big thing that we're wanting to try and uh, get out of here while they still have some residual values. So we have to answer any questions. Use car market's hot right now. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2022-0509-fire-b as in boy as presented, declaring the listed items surplus, authorizing their disposal, and authorizing the township administrator to sign for the board. Second. Trustee Crux? Yes. Trustee Walls. Yes. <laughs> Five twenty-nine a gallon. Well, we don't pay the tax, so. Yeah, actually, they did all create. I'm not certain what it is right now, but there is still a substantial discount off of buying the retail. Uh, the next item we have for you is a request uh, for the approval of a modification uh, to the uh, architect's uh, uh, agreement for Station 66. This is part of the FAA land acquisition process. Uh, there needs to be a uh, survey done for uh, the National Environmental Policy Act and the National Historic Preservation Act. 
um, and it takes some specialized uh, skills and abilities and um, understanding of this, the particular rules. The app provided a pretty detailed list of the things that go into it. I cannot probably answer any specific questions, unfortunately, it's outside my area of expertise, but I am happy to take questions back if you have them to get them answered, or um, if you felt it worth it to, to approve it. But it is part of the FAA process. <clears throat> is this a cost that we would capture and then share with the airport? No, this would be our cost for the application. Okay. Um, so this will not be shared with the airport. Okay. So now we're on, this is a worst case scenario. Um, you know, for example, when we had to get the appraisal done as part of the application process, we had to use a specialized appraiser that is approved by the federal government. So we it. it Took us a while to find someone who met the criteria to appraise land for the federal government. Then they threw a, a, a wrench at us <laughs> that said, "Then you have to hire an appraiser to review the appraiser." <laughs> so um, we had, we were kind of lucky because during the US 35 project, that person that w that was hired uh, also can do federal. So it was also does state and federal. So it was little cost to the township to have her review the first appraiser so this is part of the overall this will be the final piece of the application we will send it off to the FAA hopefully the Chicago office can approve this and it doesn't have to go to Washington DC for approval yeah, yeah. that would be nice so and that is yeah. and, and let me say this also that is also the district office FAA's hope as well that they'll be able to approve it at the uh, Chicago office and it does not have to get reviewed by DC. Okay. Yeah. Some and hopefully, do we do we get the results of the appraisal back yet, or we haven't seen those? Oh, we've seen them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have it for the application. Um, okay. So now, uh, to give you kind of the timeline of where we're at, uh, the application will once this is completed, the application will be submitted to the FAA. In the meantime, for this summer, we'll move forward with um, final design. And we are talking about uh, probably mid-summer having a joint meeting with the airport board and app architect uh, to go through the design. And then there will be a series of agreements after that uh, moving forward before the end of the year. And we hope to have the FAA approval and be able to bid the project in 2023. Now, much like we did with Station 65, uh, due to the market changes, we'll have to definitely look at budget. Uh, and we may have to do like we did with Station 65 and table it depending on cost because we're seeing a lot of costs going up. So, um, so that's kind of the timeline. So we'll have the FAA process going on in the same time getting ready for uh, a de final design and approval by the board. And then there'll be multiple agreements between the airport board and the township in regards to cost sharing, lease options, uh, and the land itself. So we're going to keep you busy on this project for the rest of the year. Okay. And I mean, my suggestion would be to acquire the land um, with a with plenty of time to build it in the event you decide to delay it, but at least secure the site. Absolutely. Yeah, that's so, our that's our intent. Yeah. And then I have a technical question as far as is it release E or is it just release? Because we have two E's on. That's probably the type. I didn't know if it was actually a releasey. It should be land release process professional. Just land process. release. Yeah. It's not a land releasey. Yeah, we're not lease. We're not the leasee of the. We're not leasing the land. We're buying the land. No, strictly type. Of. Yeah. Okay. It's release process. You know. Yeah, yeah. Just make sure it's not a leasey. Okay. Yeah. But apparently, spell check doesn't figure it out. <laughs> if you spell it right, you choose the wrong word. They're both. They're <laughs> both <laughs> words. Yeah. They're both yeah. words. <laughs> so <laughs> grammarly might. Um, I'll move to approve purchase request 22-FIRE-1386 to App Architecture for Land Release Process Professional Services in the amount of 21867 and to authorize the Township Administrator to sign for the board. Second. Trustee Kress? Yes. Trustee Wallace? Yes. Thank you, board. Uh, next item is the biweekly report. I had no questions. I had no questions. Thank you for your time today. I appreciate your support. Great. Thank we you. have two new people.
Yes, ma'am. Great. I didn't think it was better. It's like a hockey game back at full strength. I'm sorry. It's like a hockey game back at full strength. Yeah. Yes. Power play over. <laughs> <laughs> when I was at Bowling Green for a short period of time in my life, in the hockey game, they would the opponent. They would say, you know, the opponent, you know, is that back at full strength, and the crowd would say, that's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our legal advisor. You have any comments or? Um, not today. Thank you. Miami Valley Regional Planning, we had a meeting on last Thursday. Uh, it was a large packet. Um, you should have received that. Um, they introduced a new staff member for the uh, Institute Steering Committee. And they are, um, one thing I wanted staff to be aware of, they're gonna have a Tour de Gem, which will be a 100 mile bike uh, race in October. We'll get more specifics. It's gonna come through Beaver Creek. Um, and they're looking to have um, citizens on the bike route congratulating people and passing yeah. on water and whatever. So yeah, board, uh, we do the um, stop, rest stop as they call it, out at uh, Koi Trabine. Uh, Rotary, Beaver Creek Rotary is involved as well as Beaver Creek Fire Department and our sheriff. Good. Yeah. So that is coming and uh, that's all I have to report. And the RPC Technical Advisory Committee. Uh, the agenda was in your packet. Are there any questions? Any questions? No. Regional planning? Um, nothing to report. So other than um, just an awareness from uh, staff to, and I think uh, Mr. Zaharyev has articulated this as well, is to um, make sure that we're focused on uh, what's good for Beaver Creek Township uh, may not always align with what other communities in Greene County feel should be their policies or rules. Um, so. Thank you. Health Department, um, Ms. Dean is in here. Yeah, she'll give a report next meeting. There was a meeting, uh, I believe, on the 5th. Okay. She attended. School Superintendent, City Manager. Uh, I have a meeting tomorrow night with the Superintendent, uh, City Manager. Uh, we had the joint meeting, so we have our monthly, uh, due to my vacation, mm -hmm. but the monthly meeting was canceled, so it'll be this month. And no uh, report from right back. And Green County Township Association meeting will be hosted by the San Green County Sanitary Engineering tomorrow night at 6.30, and it's at a park, and I can't, I don't have my notes here. Yeah, I'm unable to attend tomorrow since I have a meeting with the superintendent. So. Okay. It's at a park. Investment Oversight Committee? No, no report. Any other items for the good of the order? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Trustee Kurtz? Yes. Trustee Wallace? Yes. <laughs>